Hello everyone, welcome back. KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts and a video to follow last night's video on this MFJ259D analyzer, the new one. Now I did mention in this video that this new analyzer has the two new bands in it. What are the two new bands? We're talking 630 meters and 2200 meters. So you can check out the video on this, but just to answer the question why, and more importantly, for you to just get a little insight of something you didn't know, and me to learn from your comments. So we're gonna check out both bands quickly as someone who has never operated them but did a little bit of research, a little bit of talking. The 630 meter band and the 2200 meter band, which I happen to be able to receive on my ICOM 7300, although I don't have an antenna hooked up at the moment and I really don't have any antenna usable or suitable for this uh, band at the moment. Um, my radio does receive that and all the way down to 2200 meters. So let's check out both bands quick like just to give you a little bit of oomph to get out there and figure this out and learn more information. Maybe this is for you. Okay, so let me wrap this up together in one video covering these two bands. I'll talk fast, but the goal is to give me something to talk about, give you a little bit of insight and interest to go out and find more information, talk to your friends at your ham club, talk to buddies at ham fest, and learn from the experts that know more about this than I do. But it gives you a little oomph to get out there and explore new things so that you can pass on the knowledge or learn something that you didn't know. So I'll talk fast and try to make it brief. Now, we're going to encompass this together in one video. The two bands that the FCC issues for amateur radio service are the 630 meter and the 2200 meter band. Some people call it 600 meters. And this was formally allocated uh, first at the World Radio Telecommunication Conference in 2012 and initially, uh, you know, in effect, January 1st, 2013. Now, I have some tabs up here, and I'll give you this information here soon. It's in the description of the video, and I'll teach you a couple things that you may have not known from my research. So the two new bands, 630 and 2200, not for everybody. This isn't something that you're going to go out and you're going to call CQ Mobile or you're going to set up a field day event at 600. Maybe you could at field day, but it's not for everybody, okay? And we'll get to that. Now, um, the two bands... 630 meter band covers 472 to 479 kilohertz and the 2200 meter 135.7 kilohertz to 137.8 kilohertz so what's that mean you know where 160 meters is 1.8 to 2 megahertz right that's usually the bottom right there where you can transmit and then you have am broadcast like starts at 540 or something now you have something below am broadcast now my 7300 will receive those it will not transmit, maybe with the mod it will. Um, but those two bands are also limited. Let's talk about the highlights. I don't want to drag this on, okay? Let's talk about the highlights. Permit uh, 630 meters will be permitted at a maximum equivalent isotropically radiated power, EIRP, of 5 watts, except in parts of Alaska within 800 kilometers of Russia, where the maximum would be 1 watt EIRP. Now, that's relative to an isotropic antenna, um, you know, with the formula and all that. So, 5 watts. Now, you may be thinking, wow, 5 watts does nothing on 75 or 80 meters, and 5 watts does nothing on 160 meters sometimes, and the bands are dead. Well, there's actually quite a bit you can do with this, but again, you're not going to jump on there and be calling CQ. It's mostly people that are doing CW, doing Whisper, which we'll talk about in a second, and testing propagation on those really low bands, okay? But as you know, if you're familiar with 160 meters, those low bands are very, very, uh, you know, affected by uh, man-made noise now, power lines, electronics, electrical interference, and stuff like that. Very, very noisy. But let's keep going here. Amateurs operating on 2200 meters here will be permitted to run up to 1 watt EIRP. Again, um, you're not going to really go out and buy a radio that's exclusive to these two bands. Um, there are a lot of home-built transmitters. There are a lot of probably SDRs that will go down that far. And um, we're going to talk about antenna in a second. So this is a, a fun fact here. The FCC requiring a one-kilometer separation distance between radio amateurs using these two new bands and electric power transmission lines with PLC systems on those bands. So there's you know, power grids that transmit on these real low frequencies for information on the grid and stuff, and that could potentially cause interference to their systems. And that's probably why we're secondary, because there's some things that happen on here already, okay? Um, FCC placed a 60-meter above-ground level 
uh, AGL height limit on transmitting antennas using these two bands. Okay, so almost 200 feet. Um, the bands be available to general class and higher licensees and permissible nodes would include CW, RIDI, data, phone, and image. So I don't think the band is wide enough to get on phone, and I'm not sure how many people are effective using phone. I mean, again, 5 watts on CW or data is way different than 5 watts on phone, right? I don't know how many people are going to use phone, but maybe it's possible with a really narrow filter or something. So there's more to read on amateur, uh, on these two amateur bands on ARRL. Let's go over here, for, and you can go to Wiki too, but I mean, there's some other information because different countries have different band allocations, and different countries also have different rules. You know, in France, uh, you can only use one watt, whereas we could use five watts here. So there's different things for different countries. Now let's go up here for a second, and you may be thinking, wow, this really sounds dead. Well, I stumbled across this, that the new 630 meter band is reported very busy. And I started reading this about people that have an interest with this, uh, different stations. Look, during the past six months, our list of stations in the U.S. participating in QSOs on this band has steadily increased to 108 stations across 39 states. And they have some you know, discussion on here about... Uh, you know, different like see an analysis of the past 30 days finds 59 stations occasionally transmitting 630 meter whisper beacons in the U.S. So there is activity out there. And to back that up, I'll go to this page, which I normally check almost daily. Uh, and all the links are in the description. This is what I use dxmaps.com. And to start here, I'll go to DX Maps, right? And I'll go to 40 meters and I'll, I'll look at the activity. People are, these are people reporting spots. You click on list. These are people that manually enter down here the information of their contact. And that gives you an idea not of how propagation is. Doesn't mean that it is open or closed where you see those. But it means this guy had a CW contact with this guy or gal. And, you know, 3,000 kilometers and CW and blah, blah, blah. So then a couple years ago, I guess, or last year, I saw these two bands here. 2,200 meters and 600 meters. So before I even thought about making this video... I started clicking these and I thought, whoa, there's reports here. I went to map and I thought, wow, there's actually reports. But what's happening? What's happening is if you go to list here, 600 meters, you can see these are all whisper, whisper beacons. And we'll get to that in about one minute and 30 seconds. Um, these are all the whisper, you know, beacons. Some of them are 2,900 kilometers. Some of them are, you know, 500 kilometers and so on. So there is activity there on these frequencies. Um, so another good site that I use just for daily, you know, to see is 10 meters really dead. Well, here's a couple of action, you know, activity that's been reported about 12. Well, there's somebody on CW on 12. When you say there's nobody on 12, somebody's there and it's, oh, it's the same two people over and over. Anyways, so 600 meters shows that there's actually activity here. Okay. Whisper. What do you, if you're not familiar with whisper? Well, I haven't got into whisper. I know friends that are getting into whisper. Um, whisper is weak signal uh, propagation reporter. And basically what that is, it's like a more efficient version of FT8, let's say. Uh, but it's, it's really all it's designed. It was designed by the same person, Joe Taylor, that did uh, JT65 and FT8 and all that. It's really designed to test propagation. I mean, you figure you have this low, low frequency with, you know, one watt and it's only transmitting. Look, it's only transmitting a station's call sign, grid locator, and transmitter power in DBM. And it can decode signals uh, in the signal noise as low as neg 28 at a 2.5 kilohertz bandwidth. So that's mostly what's happening on 630 meters is whisper. And you may say, well, that's boring. But that's kind of a challenge. There's people that are detecting whisper beacons, and there are people that are transmitting it. And just think, if your beacon was picked up at one watt on this low frequency and, you know, Europe from the US, that would give you an idea of where, you know, it, it's still, it's not really racking up contacts or calling CQ or field day, but it's there. It's something we can do. Propagation reporter. Okay. And to back that up, I've made a video on this before. This is the PSK reporter, pskreporter.info. Now, what's funny is when I go here and I go, you could choose up here on the top, 600 meter band show signals sent or received by anyone using Whisper over the last 24 hours. And when I click go, I find Nobody, and that's probably because nobody set up here uh, on this page to receive 600 meter whisper beacons. Okay, because if I go to 20 meters and I go to FT8, <laughs> watch what happens. Where's FT8 at? Where's Ares? FT8. There you go. Watch this. Yep. 
can't even look at this. Whoa, yeah, right. It's the site works. It's just that nobody's on 600 meters uh, re receiving signals and uploading them to this site. Okay, um, so that's you know so far. Where is there it is whisper go. So that's so far uh, another another page that you can look at my video about pskreporter.info um, and you know what's happening now. Let's go back here to AWR again and uh, you know 2200 meters. So again permitted to use up to one watt. Okay, and uh, you need the same separation, and uh, you know that's pretty much in a nutshell together with 630 and 2200 meters. So let's see what's happening on 2200 meters. Uh, so I'm going to go. We're going to close that one. Uh, we're going to go to 2200 meters, and look, there's actually activity here as well. Wow, go to map. Now look, this is 2200 meters, and again, I know you guys are screaming at the monitor. Who cares? I want to make contacts on FTA. I want to talk to people with a microphone. Fine. But there are people that are into experimentation and testing and learning and getting facts and data about how propagation works. And there are people that have done all those QSL cards and they've worked all those stations, but they're interested to see just how far you can get one watt at 136 kilohertz, right? Look at this here, this map. You can see there's people stateside all over and there's people in Europe, but you don't see any across. Maybe that will work on a good day. Maybe you're the guy that's in Florida that is received as a propagation beacon in Italy or Russia. And you can say your one watt went, you know, thousands of miles, you know what I mean? And then you can take that data and more learning about these bands and see what that means to you and learn about the solar index and propagation and such. So there are reasons and people that are interested in this. So that's 2,200 meters and you can see most of the contacts are 1,800, 900, 500 miles, kilometers, stuff like that. And it'll give you, you know, they're entering, these people are entering in this information on their signal and noise ratio. Um, and you can look more about Whisper and download the program. I think it's the same uh, JT program that you would use for FT8 and JT65 to decode Whisper. And there's other hardware for that, okay? So we'll go up here and we'll try it on here. 2,200 meters. I don't even know what 4,000 meters is and I don't want to know. So here's 2,200 meters. Signals are sent and received by anyone using Whisper. In 24 hours, I see nothing. Probably because these people, again, are not geared up to be receiving 2,200 meter uh, beacon reports on this site. Okay, but you get the idea. I saw this presentation on a tab when I was making this video. I had to cut it in here and throw it in. Check out the link to this page here. Rudy Severns N6LF. Their presentation of the two new amateur bands. A lot of information in here. Um, some of it I've already covered, but stuff like this that I didn't take from this presentation, but kind of what I was already thinking. You know, they say common misconceptions at 2.1 kilohertz. You know, the band is too narrow to be of use. No, at such low frequencies with only one watt or five watts, you can't be heard down the block. Not true. There's always a way to get signals and propagation with very low power. Why do we have QRP radios? Too much man-made and atmospheric noise. You can't hear anything. No, that's not the case. Check out this page as well. A lot of information about reception reports, uh, links and different things, transmission modes, all kinds of stuff. A great place. Probably better than this video. Look at this. All kinds of stuff. Antenna designs. Antenna tuners, check out the link to this page here in the description. So then I clicked on the website, Antennas by N6LF, Antenna Design Ideas for Radio Amateurs by Rudy Severns. And I saw the articles and posts and all kinds of stuff about medium frequency, low frequency, 2200 meter antennas, 630 meter antennas, and some posts and articles and archives about this. Now understand this, you're going to homebrew an antenna for this. Um, unless you really load up a long 160 meter wire with a tuner, which goes against what I always said. Yes, you're going to have to use a tuner with this or develop some sort of tuning and matching system. If you look at an antenna calculator online, you're going to see that if you type in these frequencies, for instance, a 630 meter antenna is going to be like 700 feet or something. And a 2200 meter antenna is going to be almost 2000 feet for a quarter wavelength. That's way too long and you don't have enough real estate unless you do. But I don't think really that's what people do. They, you don't need all that. You can simply use an antenna maybe for 80 or 160 meters and load it up with a tuner. Or look at some of these articles about transmit antennas. And it looks like Rudy here has some documentation and information on how they made an antenna and matching coils and couplers and stuff like that. There's a lot of information out there. But 
you're going to have to, you know, your radio probably won't tune it either by itself. You're going to need a good tuner that you can manually load up. And uh, with that being said, one thing I probably didn't mention was the the one watt and five watt effective isotropic radiated power is not your transmitter power. I think your legal limit for this is up to 500 watts, but you're going to lose a lot. And by the time it comes out of the antenna, that's what you have one watt or five watts effective radiated power. So uh, you're, you know, you get an amplifier and a transmitter. And then by the time you go through all the antenna and the matching and stuff, that's what you're getting coming out of the antenna. Uh, but you're going to end up homebrewing one. And uh, that's another challenge and, and fun experience for you to make an antenna like this and to understand how it works and learn more about building antennas. Again, I'm not the perfect person at developing antennas like this, but I know how to make a simple dipole or a, a loaded vertical or a top loaded vertical or whatever. But I don't do a lot of that because I end up buying my antennas. Check out this website as well. Uh, look at the information. This link's in the description as well. And uh, more websites, if you have it, post it in the comments and tell people where to go. Well, folks, that about wraps it up. I hope you learned something from this and at least, you know, gave the consideration of the time it took uh, put into this. You know, the cool thing about YouTube and what I do is uh, I'm not an expert at this. I don't want to be an expert. I've never told you I know everything. But it's fun to do this, and I can talk about whatever I want. I can make a video on a paper clip. I can make a video on a closet door, whatever I want. But I try to keep it, you know, related to information and pertinent. And, you know, you see cool things like this with the 7300 and 9700. And then you see stuff about bands you didn't know about. So I want to see how effective this video was. Not that I'm going to start doing this every time with a, you know, a presentation on a video with websites. But tell me if you liked this, if you learned something. You know, give it a thumbs up either way. But tell me in the comments, even if you want to put negative comments. You, you know, you, you didn't like it. It was boring. I suck. Whatever you want. Put it in the comments and... and Tell me what you think. And also, if you have information for me and others to learn, put it in the comments. Tell me on the contacts you've made on 630 meters. Tell me what I need to focus on because I was totally wrong in this video. All comments are appreciated. Thumbs up are great. Subscribe, turn the bell on, watch for more videos. And 7-3 from KJ4YZI.